One of the things we're finding on the north coast is that deer are certainly our, our fastest growing pest. They tend to be popping up in lots of different places. Areas like this, where you can see that there's trees at the background and an area in front that'll allow deer to come out and bed down, but get away quite quickly if they're disturbed, are critically important to look for signs. This headland here and, and around to Corora is a, a unique bit of littoral rainforest because it's within four kilometres of the CBD and it's never been fully cleared. I've been working on it for about 10 years now and spending quite a lot of time taking out exotic weeds. Introduced species that would, if left to propagate, would just take over everything because they're introduced. And it's much the same with the deer. They began to appear about five years ago over on the western side and we've seen the population explode. People have counted 40 and 50 at times. The problem with the deer is that they're not native to our forests and our forests haven't evolved to be part of the deer invasion. Now, they're like goats, they'll eat everything they will browse on young seedlings and you won't know that they've done this until you suddenly wake up in 10 years time and you'll find that a whole species of vegetation has disappeared because they've taken out the young ones. As rare and wonderful as they are and they're beautiful creatures, they simply don't belong in the Australian bush. That's my message. We've been here for approximately 20 years and we saw lots of wallabies, lots and lots of wallabies. But we haven't seen any wallabies for at least five years. So I think that the deer have driven the wallabies out. As you can hear with all the traffic noise, we're quite close to the highway. You can't see the highway from down here. But if you walk down, you know, it wouldn't take you very long to get onto the highway. So the deer just run around in this area. I went door to door asking the neighbours, you know, if they have any problem with the deer. And a number of them said, oh yes, they, there was heaps. And I said, so when you say heaps, how many are heaps? And they said, oh, well, at least 30. I said, oh my goodness, they do the same as they do with our yard. I've got a flame tree that my husband gave me for Christmas that I'm too frightened to put in now. We've spent money on plants and put them in only to have the, the deer eat them. But it's not just that, it's the well-established trees that they're now targeting and, you know, they're destroying really nice trees that, you know, you can't just grow that again in a month or a year. It's very disappointing. Well, I look from the community members, it's generally urban gardens, the rose bushes, veggie gardens and things like that, and that, that's upsetting. In regards to our environmental volunteers, our friends of groups and land care, they'll often report a fair bit of rubbing and uh, obviously a fair bit of impact on the pick of new growth. Some of the ecologists have said to me that the, the deer impact could potentially be greater than the impact that weeds have on our uh, fragmented ecosystems in town. So it's a pretty high priority for us to manage. My name's Paul Shoker and I grow bananas and avocados in Coffs Harbour. We planted a whole heap of new bananas recently and the next day we came back and we noticed the deer had just taken the tips off them. And it basically means you either replant them, uh, which is again another cost, or you just let them go and hopefully they grow out of it. And you can see some prints here. It's, like sometimes you'd be slashing here and all of a sudden they just stand there and staring at you. Everyone on the north coast enjoys the environment, the natural habitat, um, the landscape. You know, one thing we have noticed um, um, on the back of deer um, is that we've seen other pests, uh, like for example, wild dogs uh, come about in the area. Um, and, and also what we have noticed is um, 
uh, the deer are a significant threat on um, native bushland as well. So we've seen a number of young saplings killed. Uh, we've seen a number of uh, trees that have been uh, damaged from the deer as well. So not only are they targeting commercial crops, they're also targeting the native uh, vegetation as well. So, and on top of that, you know, they are also competing. You know, we see them in people's uh, paddocks and uh, competing with you know, livestock for feed as well. Yeah, I think ultimately uh, when it comes to uh, this issue, um, you know, it affects our business and they're not going away in a hurry. Um, so I guess we have to um, respond in a way which controls the population um, in a humane manner, uh, but also is um, aware of the fact that um, you know, they are doing considerable damage to the environment. years we have seen bushfires, drought, pandemic, flooding recently um, and continuous wet weather around. Uh, we know it's important for communities to come together when there are disasters happening around them um, and just like natural disasters, pest animals needs to be part of that conversation, part of that community uh, reach out um, as well because by neighbours talking to each other and people talking down the street or at the shops about their sightings, about their experiences, it gets more people involved as well as showing people how to use the Feral Scan app then and there. When we're trying to undertake control on a landscape level, with all the agencies working together, one of the ways that the community can best get involved in supporting us is to try and record their sightings through the Feral Scan app or contact local land services or Department of Primary Industries or even Council. The more sightings we can capture, the better our data set, the better we understand the movement of the deer and the better we can understand where we can undertake management control actions to, um, to lessen the impact.